This week, health officials here in the U.S. confirmed the Zika virus causes severe birth defects in babies born to infected mothers. And they're asking for almost $2 billion to deal with the crisis, setting off a funding battle between the White House and Congress. Joining me now is the government's point man in fighting Zika, Dr. Anthony Fauci, director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. Dr. Fauci, welcome back to Fox News Sunday. Good to be with you. I want to put up the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control map, to show, and let's put it up on the screen, the states across the country where the mosquitoes that carry the Zika virus have previously been found. How serious is the threat in that blue shaded area basically the, the southern half of the country this summer and uh, this spring and summer? Well, it is likely we will have what's called a local outbreak. Right now we have in continental USA, we have over 350 imported cases, namely people who've traveled to a region, gotten infected and come, came back. The concern is once one comes back, would a mosquito, which you saw on that map, bite someone and then locally transmit it to someone who's never left the country? It would not be surprising at all, if not likely, that we're going to see a bit of that because we've seen similar types of things with other similar types of infection like dengue. We've been able to control it so that it doesn't become sustained or widespread. But the threat of at least having some local outbreak is, is, is likely, I would think. It's up to us now to make sure when it happens, we contain it. Now, you've used a couple of words in that answer that, that, that struck me. A bit of an outbreak, local right. outbreak. So are we talking about hundreds of cases? No. We're talking about thousands of no. cases? And, and, and also, is there a threat? Because I read somewhere this week that there can also potentially be a threat of brain damage to adults. Right, exactly. So there are a couple of issues you brought up that are important. When we say local, we talk not about thousands of cases. We're talking about scores of cases, dozens of cases at the most that historically with dengue were able to be contained. The other interesting thing that's important is that it is sexually transmitted. And that's another added dimension to it, that it's well documented now that it can be sexually transmitted. So there's an issue there of someone who can transmit it who has absolutely to someone who's not been bitten by a mosquito. Now, the other thing you mentioned very quickly is that in addition to the Guillain-Barre, which is kind of a hypersensitivity reaction following the infection, we see that with things like influenza. We're also seeing some disturbing indication, there are only individual case reports, of significant neurological damage to people, not just the fetuses, but an adult that would get infected, things that they call meningoencephalitis, which is an inflammation of the brain and the covering around the brain, spinal cord uh, damage due to what we call myelitis. We're starting to see them. We don't know how frequent it's going to be. So far, they look unusual, but at least we've seen them, and that's concerning. One sensitive issue I know for public health officials like yourself is whether to advise women to delay pregnancy right. in areas of the country where we may see uh, an outbreak, even if it's a localized right. outbreak uh, of the virus. What should women do? Well, right now in the United States, there should not be that concern. We do not have local transmission here. So I think the idea about people in the continent of the United States delaying pregnancy is not, is not even an issue for discussion at this point. The issue is when you're dealing in countries in which you have outbreaks like in South America, particularly Brazil or Puerto Rico, there's a concern about what you might advise women. Right now, the recommendations from the CDC are consult your physician about the kinds of options you might have. But a direct uh, recommendation to delay has been given by countries. For example, El Salvador has actually said you should delay if you could. The confounding issue, Chris, about that, that's in countries in which you may not have good access to birth control. And that's one of the things that confounds that question. If, if we begin to see localized outbreaks here in the United States, b besides birth control, what can men and women do to protect themselves? And that's a, a great question. Protect yourself against mosquitoes. And that you can do that. The government and local authorities can do it by cleaning up the environment to not allow mosquitoes to breed. They breed in still water, pots, pans, tires, or what have you. But the critical issue is if you're in this country, and we do have that, stay indoors if you can with air conditioning and screen. When you're outdoors, dress in a way that covers most of your body, but use DEET containing uh, insect repellents. DEET at 30% is safe. It's safe for a woman who's pregnant. It's safe for babies older than six months old. We shouldn't hesitate to use insect repellent. Now, there's quite a battle here in Washington, and we really began to see it this week over government funding. You 
and the administration, public health officials have asked for $2 billion. To do what? Well, the, it's $1.9 billion, $1.5 for HHS, which involves the Centers for Disease Control, particularly the Centers for Disease Control, about $800 million for Puerto Rico, for international, but particularly for domestic. And that's a variety of things. Insect control, mosquito control, we at NIH developing a vaccine, which is very important, public health measures, educational campaigns. So there's been delineated the kinds of things to do, and it's divided among different agencies within HHS as well as uh, USAID and the State Department. Okay. Now, as I say, you've asked for $1.9 billion uh, as, back, as far back as February. This week, the administration announced it is transferring a, almost $600 million that were mostly in Ebola funds to go address this, but you're asking for the full $1.9 uh, and there's a sharp disagreement right. about the rest. Here, take a look. This is going to be leading all your news broadcasts. This is going to be on the front page of newspapers across the country. And I don't know what Republicans are going to say that they did to prepare for it. We will address this situation through the regular appropriations process um, as the need arises, and our appropriators are looking at how to do just that. Now, congressional Republicans say that the plan that the administration has submitted so far is basically an outline. It's not a detailed plan. And the head of the House Appropriations Committee, a fellow named Hal Rogers, Republican from Kentucky, he says that basically it's a slush fund. Yeah. Well, obviously, we disagree with that. I mean, when we put together what we would be doing, and we'd be more than happy to go over it even in more detail with them, but we have put together a, essentially a project-by-project project approach of what we would do. I can tell you with regard to what I am responsible for, namely the development of a vaccine, we know exactly how we're going to spend that money and hopefully a successful development of a, of a Zika vaccine. So when Speaker Ryan, as we just saw in that clip, talks about, well, we'll look at it in the regular appropriations right. process, is that satisfactory or do you need it to be dealt with more urgently? Well, the reason is we have to act now, Chris, and the regular appropriation process, a good process, is one that takes time, so we have to move now. I can't wait to start developing a vaccine. We have to do it, and in order to do it, you need money, and that's the reason for the urgency of getting that money. Now, you have said that when the president called for $2 billion, $1.9 billion, that you needed the $1.9 billion. What's what do you see as the fallout? What if you don't get that money? What if Congress doesn't appropriate it? Well, if we don't get the money, then what we'll have to do is to take things away from other very important areas and move it here because we can't stop. Uh, we can't just not address this. This is really a very important thing. So we will have to be moving money around. What's your sense uh, of this virus? Uh, because, frankly, you've been a little bit more reassuring today than, than, than some of the conversations that I've seen in, in the media. How serious a threat, how, serious should, uh, how seriously should people be worried about it, and what is the prognosis? Is this something that's going to be with us for years? or If it acts like a similar infection called dengue, which is transmitted by the same type of mosquito, exactly the same type of mosquito, and you look what's happened in Brazil and in the Caribbean, dengue has been around for several years now. I don't predict that this is going to be a one-off and be gone. That's the issue. The issue of being concerned and how concerned we are, you have to be prepared for something like this. It may be something that may be a small chance of a wide outbreak, but as long as there is a chance, if you get caught without being prepared, then you have a real problem. And that's the reason why we emphasize the need, not for concern, but the need for preparation. Dr. Fauci, thank you. Thanks for your time today. We'll stay on top of this story. It's Good an important to be with one. Thank you.